Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, mutinous soldiers in Somalia hold part of Mogadishu. A day after three were killed in fatal clashes with government troops, the opposition fighters oppose the extension of President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed's mandate and want him to quit. Also, as Malawi and South Sudan consider destroying out-of-date coronavirus vaccines, the suspicions that many African communities have about the shots continue to negatively impact uptake. And my octopus teacher schools its rivals and is named as best documentary at the Oscars. The South African film is a heartwarming tale of the bond between a diver and an octopus. But first, opposition soldiers remain spread out through Somalia's capital in a tense standoff over the extended stay in power of President Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed. He faces growing opposition after the lower house of parliament greenlit another two years in office for the leader. His mandate had been due to run out in February. On Sunday, at least three people were killed after hundreds of mutinous soldiers demanding Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed's resignation entered the city and clashed with security forces. Regional correspondent Makawa Shachwayu tells us more. The clashes yesterday began after dozens of opposition supporters marched in protests against Somalia's president, Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, also known as Famajo, who extended his term earlier this month by two years. Sporadic bursts of heavy gunfire could be heard across Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, on Sunday night. The fighting was between government forces and soldiers aligned with the various opposition politicians. The forces opposed to President Formaggio have vowed to remove him. They say that this extension shows that he wants to stay in power by force. Today, that control of important parts of the capital, Mogadishu, including a security checkpoint near the presidential palace. Two opposition politicians said that forces loyal to President Formaggio attacked their homes, but the government has denied this. People living in areas that were taken over by pro-opposition fighters fled their homes last night. The residents have urged both sides to stop fighting and complained that their electricity and water had been cut off. Tensions between the president and opposition leaders have been high since February when his term ended before fresh elections could be held. Uh, this resulted in opposition politicians and their supporters saying that they no longer recognize his rule. The British Embassy and the European Union envoy in Mogadishu say that they are concerned about the violence, while peace and security experts say that the fighting gives an opening to the armed group Al-Shabaab to exploit divisions in the armed forces and further its violent agenda. Mikawa Shachwai there for us. Now, more than 30 soldiers have reportedly been killed in an attack on an army base in northeastern Nigeria. Militants believed to belong to the Islamic State West Africa province group targeted the site in Minoc town in Borno State on Sunday afternoon. The attackers re reportedly arrived in 16 gun trucks and six mine-resistant military vehicles and wore military camouflage as they staged the raid. They managed to capture the base but were forced out after airstrikes were called in. Chad's new transitional military council has named a prime minister. Between 2016 and 2018, Albert, Albert Pahimi Padake was also premier under late leader Idris Deby, whose death was announced last week. Deby's son is now running the country. Opposition leaders have called this an institutional coup. Pahimi Padake has called on Chadians to back plans to return to civilian rule with elections held within 18 months. Now, Malawi and South Sudan may destroy up to 70,000 AstraZeneca vaccination doses because they've passed their expiration date. The World Health Organization has urged them not to get rid of vaccination stock, even if the expiration date has passed, because they may be used up to 36 months after production. Malawi has said that it will bin the jabs because they were no longer being stored at the correct temperatures. South Sudan, however, still hasn't made a final decision. Overall, the continent is still struggling to get all the vaccination it needs, so each dose is precious. However, take-up for available shots 
has been slow across parts of Africa because of scepticism and suspicion about the inoculations. Our team reports from Ivory Coast. Empty chairs, bored staff and patients like Basile occasionally trickling in. La maladie, ce pas de l'amusement. C'est c'est une gist, c'est la réelle. Dans tout, j'invite tous mes frères et sœurs, ceux qui ne courront pas la maladie de venir va se faire vacciner. Since the arrival of 504,000 doses of AstraZeneca at the end of February under the COVAX scheme, followed up by a donation of 50,000 more doses from India, fewer than 100,000 people have received a jab in Ivory Coast. Compte tenu de, de l'actualité des réseaux sociaux, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui sont réticentes. Donc vraiment, le volet communication doit s'intensifier pour que les gens viennent se faire vacciner. Il ne faut, faut pas se le cacher, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui sont réticentes. The suspension of the AstraZeneca vaccine in a number of European countries due to concerns over blood clots, doubts over the efficacy of the vaccine against the 501YV2 variant discovered in South Africa, and a mountain of fake news have dissuaded many Ivorians from getting vaccinated. If it's me, I don't want to go here. Because it's not good. It kills people. The vaccines that come to Africa, according to some, are to fill the virus. The authorities remain confident and have expanded their target, now offering the vaccine to all adults. Nous faisons aussi une surveillance épidémiologique et à ce jour nous n'avons pas encore détecté de cas graves de d'effets secondaires et aussi pas de thrombose. Donc nous voulons rassurer. Less than 0.5% of the Ivorian population have received a vaccination so far. 60% would have to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity, a target that is for now a long way off. French energy firm Total has stopped all work on its $20 billion gas project in northern Mozambique because of the extremist insurgency there. The move is a blow to the country, which was counting on the economic growth expected to come from the project. Nicolas Chemin tells us more. These are pictures on Total's website of its $20 billion liquefied natural gas project in northern Mozambique. The French energy giant has just announced it is suspending its work there following the latest jihadist attack on a nearby town last month. Total declared force majeure, which allows it to cancel contractors. Mozambique's National Petroleum Institute stressed that Total had not abandoned the project. Last month's attack forced 50,000 people to flee the town of Palma. <laughs> The World Food Programme says the situation is critical. What we know is that people have been walking for days, some as many as five, six days. They've hidden in the bush, um, again without food and water, just escaping with what they have. The jihadist insurgency began in 2017 in the gas-rich Cabo Delgado province. Since then, at least 2,600 people have been killed, according to the NGO ACLED. The government estimates that more than 700,000 people have been displaced because of the violence. South African film My Octopus Teacher won the Oscar for Best Documentary over the weekend. It's a heartwarming tale of the relationship between a human and an octopus. Take a look. A lot of people say an octopus is like an alien. The strange thing is, as you get closer to them, you realize that you're very similar in a lot of ways. It's a hard thing to explain, but sometimes you just get a feeling and you know there's something to this creature that's very unusual. There's something to learn here. Well, as you can see, the film follows a diver as he explores the octopus's underwater world. But as our Sam Brad piece reports, there's also a far more universal message behind it. The, day when it all started. the action takes place in the great African kelp forest in the icy waters off the coast of Cape Town. My octopus teacher tells the story of the remarkable relationship between filmmaker Craig Foster 
and an octopus. Now, the incredibly strong bond, the almost loving bond uh, that that Foster builds with his subject allows the production team to get incredible access into the life of these amazing aquatic creatures. But the film's associate producer told us that it's also about so much more than that. We've created nation states, we've created borders, we've created religions, we've created all these things that separate us from each other. But what nature actually teaches you is you're home. You're a child of this planet. It doesn't matter who you are, where you live, uh, what your economic background might be, what your caste, creed, religion, color, it doesn't matter. You are a child of this planet and you belong. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa actually wrote to the production team uh, to congratulate them for the various accolades that they've picked up with this film. He said the documentary was important in not only raising awareness of life in the ocean, but also raising appreciation. Now, it's worth remembering that about two thirds of the world's marine ecosystems are degraded, according to the UN. Now, to this end, the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, said he was delighted that the film would be translated into various South African languages, and he called for it to be shown in schools across the country. You are a child of this planet and you belong. Words that will stick with me for a while. That is, though, all we have time for on Eye in Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.